Okay, this is Ms. Wiles, and this is part three of the SMA3 prep. In this problem, you're given information. Let's go ahead and read it through. And I'm going to encourage you to just pause the video here and work this problem out before you look at the solution as usual. A linear function has a y-intercept of 5 and passes through the point 8, 6. Greg compared the slope of the function to the slope of 2x minus y equals 4. What is the difference in the two slopes? So although you get to use a calculator, you don't always, calculator won't do everything for you. So the first part of the problem, you have a linear function that goes through, it has a y-intercept of 5. So I'm going to put a point at the y-intercept of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It passes through the point 8, 6. So I count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm like, well, I didn't quite get it long enough. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I then take my straight edge, if I want to, I can actually figure this out without the straight edge of the other scratch paper or whatever I have and draw that line. Now what you have to know here to find the slope is that slope is the rise over the run. Just like we practice in class, but now I want to actually count it to see what it is. I've got these two points, and so I'm going to count up and over. I make a triangle out of it. And to get to this point, to get from point 0, 05 over to point 86, I'm going to go up 1 and write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So by looking and counting, I have the slope of the first line being 1 eighth. So again, we get the slope being 1 eighth by counting up 1 and count over 8 to get to the other point that is on the line. So that gives us the slope of the first part, but it doesn't give us the slope of the function 2x minus y equals 4. And this is one of those that's not in the form that I want it to be. So I want it to be in that y equals form so that I can tell what the slope is because I know the slope is the coefficient of the x. So the first thing I do is subtract 2x. And then I have negative y equals negative 2x plus 4. And now because y is negative, I can't stop there. I need to divide everything by negative 1 to get rid of that negative sign. So the negative 1 that I can't see there beside the y divided by negative 1 cancels that negative out, but it changes that negative 2x to a positive 2x, and it changes that plus 4 to a minus 4. So just by, by solving this equation and looking at this value, then I can see that the slope of the second function is 2. The slope of the second function is 2. The slope of the first function was 1 eighth. The question asks, what is the difference in the two slopes? The word difference means that I'm going to subtract. So I pick up my handy-dandy calculator, and when I subtract these, I'm going to start with the highest slope. And so I want to subtract. I'm going to do 2 minus alpha y equals for that fraction, 2 minus 1 eighth. The answer I get is 15 over 8, which doesn't match exactly any of these answer choices. All right, so we have 2 minus 1 eighth. 
that gives us an answer of 15 over 8, but it doesn't match any of my answer choices, but it does. It answers one of my answer it it matches one of my answer choices that definitely isn't one half and it definitely isn't one so it's one of these two now my calculator because I get to use the calculator on this part it will help me I can use my fraction menu go alpha y equals and my calculator yours too will change that fraction to a mixed number with the selection of number three it takes a regular fraction and changes it to a mixed number. And if I choose that, I see that it's 1 and 7 eighths. And that is my answer. Notice that this question had so many parts to it. It had the first part where you had to graph a y-intercept and another point and find the slope of that line. Then it had another part where they gave you the equation of the line and you had to solve for y to find the slope of that line. Then it asked you what is the difference between these two slopes and you had to know that difference meant subtract. And then when you subtracted, you had to know to be able to change 15 eighths into the form of the answer that was given in the answer choices. So you have to be very organized and very focused on the problem to be able to solve it. And that's all I have to say about that one. We'll go on to number 11. Okay, we're back and we're looking at number 11. Which of the following situations, by the way, you see me covering up all the other stuff because there's a lot of stuff going on on these pages and I do that a lot on, although you'll be taking yours online so you don't have to worry too much about other stuff. Okay, number 11, which of the following situations would be modeled by a linear function? Letter A says a bacteria that is doubling every hour. Letter B says the path of a high diving champion. Letter C says a savings account that is growing by 1.5% each year. Let's take that part out. That was supposed to be erased, the number of calories burned when running at a constant speed. We'll take that out. You might see that again tomorrow, but who knows. The weight of a bodybuilder who gains 0.5 pounds of muscle every week. Now again, I'm going to cross that part out because that was not supposed to be part of that answer choice. When we look at this kind of question we have a situation we're trying to figure out which one could be linear. Think about what I told you about linear functions. As they increase they increase at a constant rate. It's always the same. You're always either adding something or subtracting something every time. You have this starting space and you're just, it's, it's a constant rate of change. Now a bacteria that is doubling every year or every hour or whatever, it sounds like it's constantly getting bigger and bigger, but when it doubles, that's not adding or subtracting something every time. That's really doubling. That's like going from 12 to 24 to 48 to 96. I mean, it is increasing too fast. When you talk about the path of a high diving champion, they jump off of the, um, they're at the, the plank, the board, the, um, the board that they jump off of. They jump up into the air and they come down. That looks like a parabola. It looks like a, a quadratic. Letter C says a savings account that is growing by 1.5%. That's not adding one particular number that's never going to change. As the saving account grows, it's going to grow higher and higher, but it's going to add more and more. The first year it might only add 1.5, and then it's going to add more. Not a percentage. A percentage does not mean that it's constant. But letter D, we look for, when we're looking for a linear function, a constant rate of change. A constant rate of change that it's always going to be exactly the same amount that we're adding or subtracting. In this one, we have the weight of a bodybuilder who gains a half a pound every week. That is constant. You're adding one half, adding one half, adding one half every single week. So look for the situation that's going to add or subtract the same thing, the same exact number, not a percentage, not a doubling or tripling, and nothing that would look like a parabola.
and that's all I have to say about that. Perhaps I should be very clear and say that the correct answer is D because we are adding 0.5 every week. That's what that is. When, when we have a linear function, we are adding a particular number, not some value, but we're adding or subtracting a particular number every day or every week or every hour or such. And now that's really all I have to say about that. Number 12, John started collecting MTG cards. Anybody know what MTG cards are? Magic the Gathering. John started collecting Magic the Gathering cards in 2005. By the end of the year, he had 300 cards. By 2010, he had 1,300 cards. If he continues to collect cards at the same rate, about how many cards would he have by 2014? So let's think about this situation. He started with 300 cards. By 2010, it grew to 1,300. This happened in 1990, I'm sorry, 2005. This happened in 2010. How long did it take? It took five years. How much did it grow? 1,000 cards. How many per year? 200. 200 per year because it increased, his collection increased from 1,300, I'm sorry, from 300 to 1,300. So it increased by 1,000. He added 1,000 cards to his collection over that five years. And because it took him five years to do it, he increased 200 every year. Now the question is saying, how many cards would he have by 2014? Well, how many more years does he have? He's got four more years. So we're going to multiply that 200 by four. He should add another 800 to his collection for a total of 2,100. And because we add that to the 1,300 that he had in 2010. So there's logic in it. There's figuring it out. It's like a puzzle. It's got all these pieces to it. And you use the numbers to figure out the story, to figure out what's going to happen next. And the correct answer is 2,100. And it's like this story that you're figuring out. You've got the numbers to tell the story and work it on out. It's a mystery, and you are Scooby and friends. So work out that problem. And that's all I have to say about that one.